Tesla and Uber are fighting to be your go-to for a self-driving ride-sharing fleet of vehicles. And the Uber CEO recently was talking about how he feels it's important to be first. Speed to market is paramount in success. So I thought, let's take a look at what data we do have about this and see if we can figure out who's gonna win this battle. The first thing I wanna talk about is trust. Now, Uber has had the trust of its millions of riders for quite a while now. Uh, there are some cases where you hear people being overcharged and all that, but Uber does seem to have the trust of a lot of people, and frankly, it's one of the best services out there, so people are gonna use it no matter what. Uber has recently had some issues in California, however, with their self-driving program. The DMV actually sent them a letter stating that what they're doing is illegal after some videos of their cars running red lights in San Francisco surfaced on the internet. Now Uber argued that because they had a person in the driver's seat that it wasn't illegal and they didn't want to apply for the permit. Now a couple of weeks later, however, they did cave and they actually shut down their self-driving program while issuing a statement that they're now looking at where they can redeploy these cars but remain 100% committed to California. But I don't know if this is gonna affect their reputation at all you know, in the long run. Tesla, on the other hand, has had some issues in the past when it comes to trust, even with their owners and the people that are part of the Tesla family. And that happened back when the Model S was first being released. There was this whole bait and switch thing. It was a big fiasco, it was really bad, but they put a lot of that past them and now they have a pretty strong community of people that really feel like they're a part of something special when they own a Tesla. So their ownership base is really strong or really, I would say, adamant and, and really enthusiastic about their products. But what does the market think about this? If we take a look at the funding from Uber and what they've been able to do, so far they've been able to raise about $12.5 billion in 19 rounds of funding from 25 different investors. That gives them a total of about a $66 billion valuation. Now that is insane. That is a giant, giant number. That's close to the Facebook IPO when they were just north of 100 billion. Now, the big thing here though is that Uber isn't really a car company as much as it is a network. They're just really a service provider. They don't own vehicles. They don't maintain the cars. That's what their riders do. This is how they've been able to scale worldwide in such a short amount of time. Tesla, on the other hand, has some of the more traditional problems that car manufacturers have, uh, which also I think may give them an advantage here. So if we take a look at the data about Tesla, just recently they've had a huge surge in their stock. Now, that's just recent and it puts them at about a $33.6 billion valuation. That's half of the current valuation of Uber. Again, Uber is a private company, so there isn't a ton of data about their financials out there yet. Uh, but that being said, you know, Tesla, while it is the darling of the tech industry, or one of them, it's is very different than Uber in the sense of how the market sees them. Being a car manufacturer is really hard compared to just being an app developer and building a social network. So the challenges you face are quite different and it puts Tesla in a different category, in, at least in terms of investors' minds when they look at it from a public market standpoint. Now, what about any anyone else? Uh, there's GM that's doing some of this and they're partnering with Lyft. There's the new Faraday Future, which sounds like it might be going down in flames, I don't know. And then there's things like Lucid, which actually some of the former Tesla people that started a similar thing. And a lot of these guys are touting self-driving capabilities and all that. So are they going to enter this market or are they just doing self-driving as something that is gonna you know, give their owners another feature? Well, Lyft obviously is looking to make it a ride-sharing part of their service, but they're so far behind, it really begs the question of whether or not they'll be a factor at all. Certainly, I don't think they're gonna be the first ones there, and I've been wrong before, so uh, we'll see. But right now, it looks like Tesla and Uber are the real ones that are pushing ahead with this. There's also companies like Google, who are really probably at the, at the forefront of the software you need to actually do uh, self-driving cars, but are they going to do a ride-sharing service? It seems a little not Google-like, but who knows? And then what about Amazon? I haven't really heard much from them on this, but chances are they're probably working on it, especially if this rivalry between Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos continues. The next thing to think about is quality. So simply put, would you rather ride in a Ford Focus or Volvo or a Tesla? Now, Teslas aren't the fanciest cars in the world, as many of you have commented on my other videos. Uh, 
But if you compare it to say a Volvo, which I guess is a nice car, uh, or, or like a, a Ford Focus, I really don't see how Uber comes out ahead. Now, the one thing about that though, is that, uh, you know, they could partner with anyone out there, right? They could partner with Mercedes or BMW or some of the higher end luxury cars. I mean, honestly, if I'm talking about just luxury comfort ride, I may sit in an Escalade or some kind of fancy SUV or something like that for my dollar. But the point being, Tesla certainly has decent, or I consider them really high quality vehicles with really comfortable rides. Even if you just look at companies like Tesloop, which provide a ride sharing service, sort of. It's like a car service that they take you to from city to city in a Tesla. Uh, right now, I think they just go from LA to Palm Springs, which I would love to try someday, uh, but they don't come to San Diego yet. So maybe when they do, I'll give them a shot and uh, we can see how that goes. But point being, you know, you can have a service in a really nice vehicle and the cars are already nice. You don't have to like seek out and try to find a good partner like Uber will have to do if they wanna compete on quality. And the last question about that is who cares? Do you really care how nice the car is that you go from here to work in? If you do, then yeah, it would make sense. But uh, Uber X alone really aren't great cars. So I don't know if this is a part of the strategy like Travis, the CEO of Uber has said it should be. So what about price? Well, with price, I think Uber is gonna be hands down the winner. In fact, uh, a report that came out recently said that an autonomous taxi or a self-driving ride-sharing vehicle would be about 35 cents per mile compared to the close to three bucks per mile that you may pay right now. Uh, $2.86 uh, was the comparison there in San Francisco. So that is tremendously cheaper and it makes a lot of sense, right? Because the most expensive thing about an Uber is the driver. Now. How does it make the drivers feel though if the company that you work for is basically trying to get rid of you? Well, it probably shouldn't feel that unfamiliar because that's basically what companies have been doing since the industrial revolution. But point being that the cost is gonna come down tremendously for these rides. Now, Tesla is more tied to this ownership model. They're not really interested in ride sharing revenue as they are as helping people offset the cost of ownership. There's been a lot of studies out there and it makes sense if you think about it, 90% of the time your car is either sitting in your garage or at work or wherever you park it. It's really not doing anything for you. So it's basically a horrible investment, even if it has low maintenance costs, high resale value and all those things. None of that really matters since the car is just sitting there the majority of the time. So if you could do something about that, that would be really helpful and that would help Tesla's model continue to thrive. So Travis Kalanick, the CEO of Uber, recently said that if we are not tied for first, then the person who is in first or the entity that's in first then rolls out a ride sharing network that is far cheaper or far higher quality than Uber's, then Uber is no longer a thing. I think what he's trying to say is basically that if they don't do this, then someone else is going to and they'll be gone, which means to their investors that they'll be losing all that money, which they don't wanna do. They know it's imperative. If they don't do it, then someone, Tesla perhaps, is gonna do it and they're just gonna eat their lunch and dominate the market and Uber will kind of fade away as many other companies have when a new entrant has come, really figured something out. I mean, think about Friendster. No, I didn't think so. Okay. so. The last part of the equation here is speed. So speed to market. This is one of the key things in business when you wanna compete. The way they're doing it is they're putting all the hardware and all the new cars, that includes the Model 3, will have the capability to be fully autonomous and have what they're calling the Tesla network. The, the idea where I can sit at home, push a button on my phone, send the car out and have it make me money and come back. And that's pretty sweet. I think that that's a good argument uh, to be made that they are really killing it or they are gonna be first to market in this space of this autonomous taxi business. In 2016, Tesla will get close to 200,000 cars delivered. And in 2017, with the Gigafactory online and the Model 3 deliveries beginning, they should beat that number pretty easily. Now for 2018, they said they're aiming to deliver 500,000 cars. So if we take just those two years and give them an 80% chance of hitting those numbers, they're looking at about 560,000 cars on the street that could become self-driving with a simple software upgrade. No one is even close to getting this many cars in the market. So we'll see how long Tesla waits to actually launch their Tesla network, considering they'll have such a big head start.
When it comes to the money that they're spending too, Tesla hasn't really turned much of a profit yet. I mean, they did in Q3 of this year, finally, which was great. But the reason they don't, and a lot of people hate on them for this, is that they spend all their money on research and development. Not turning a profit doesn't mean you're not making money. Uh, for anyone that's unfamiliar with that. Not making a profit means that you're doing something with that money, hopefully to push your business forward. Remember, Tesla's an automaker. They're competing with GM and Ford and Volkswagen and these huge, huge companies that have been around for hundreds of years. They need to continue to innovate and really invest every dollar they can in that, which is why they've been basically uh, running at a loss here and spending all their money on R&D. So in 2015, Tesla spent just over $700 million in research and development. So if you compare that to Uber during that same time frame, it looks like they estimated around 200 million. So Tesla is tripling their spend on R&D. I mean, they are just killing everybody when it comes to innovating. Now granted, Uber doesn't really have much to spend R&D on, right? They're doing, they have an app, which they've pretty much mastered, and then they have to now do the self-driving thing. So the cost of what they're spending their money on would probably be far less considering Tesla has to figure out things like how to manufacture cars, how to make batteries, how to do solar, how to do all the stuff than all the crazy stuff that they're doing. So they have a much bigger kind of uh, plate that they have to work on uh, versus Uber's very kind of much smaller focus, even though it's a much broader scale. Now, Uber doesn't make cars, remember, and they said that they won't make them. That means that they have to partner with somebody and that they have to use the strength of their network. Now, the challenge there is whether or not that that will be enough. Because if you think about it, if cars were a commodity, if there were a dozen manufacturers all selling cars that were self-driving, yes, Uber's strength of their network would win. But that's not the case. The only company that really is putting out cars that are gonna be self-driving in the next couple of years is Tesla. Yes, Google probably has the edge on them when it comes to the software and maybe testing and they're a bit better, but how many cars has Google sold? Is that really Google's model? I don't think it is. They're, other than the phone recently, they're not really a hardware manufacturer at all. So I don't even know if that's in the cards for them. So Tesla really has the edge on this, but Uber could come back if and when those cars become a commodity. So let's think about that for a second though. Tesla isn't a ride sharing company. This was kind of a late game fourth quarter decision to try to actually compete with you know this idea of de-ownership or people not wanting to own cars anymore which is certainly a strong headwind for them to try to face so their model is built around you owning a car and tesla's network this ride sharing service called the tesla network is really just there to offset the cost of ownership so it's not tesla versus uber as elon musk puts it it's the people versus uber all right, so tell me, who's gonna really win this though? Do you think it'd be Tesla with the Tesla network and the hundreds of thousands of self-driving cars out there and owners like me pushing buttons and sending our cars out to make us money? Or will it be Uber, that friend that's got you home drunk from the bar time and time again and their partnerships with companies like Volvo or GM or anyone else? Or is it someone I haven't even thought of like Faraday Future or Lucid or someone else? Let me know in the comments below. I love your feedback on this and all these other comparisons that I do, as well as any other ideas you have for future videos. So please leave them in the comments. I'll reply and we can have a conversation. I really do appreciate it. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you back here next time.